Hey guys, welcome to another communication skills video. My name is Priya and I'm a final year medical student in Newcastle University, Medicine Malaysia. Today's topic is about pediatrics. I'm going to be talking about Kawasaki disease. In this video, I'm going to practice my communication skills by explaining what is Kawasaki disease is all about, what are the managements and the complications of the disease by using layman's term. Before we move to the demo consultation, let me tell you a little bit about Kawasaki disease. It's also called as mucocutaneous lymph node syndrome and it normally presents as an acute febrile illness in early childhood due to vasculitis of median sized arteries. Given its predilection for coronary arteries, there is a potential for development of coronary artery aneurysm and sudden death in children. Therefore, as medical students and doctors, we need to educate the parents of the child about the condition and how to take care of them. On a side note, this video is mainly focused on communication skill basis in terms of explaining medical terms to a patient in a simpler way and improving your verbal and non-verbal components. But if you are interested to know more about Kawasaki disease, I'll put down some link in the description below for you to have a further read. Now, let's have a read of the situation and enjoy the demo consultation that I did it with my friend. Hello, good morning. I'm Dr. Priya the foundation year one doctor in the PEDS department. May I quickly confirm that I'm talking to the mother of Sarah, six-month-old girl? Yes, doctor. I'm Sarah's mother. Uh, your name and age, please? I'm Jenny. I'm 35 years old. All right, uh, Mrs. Jenny, I was told that your daughter has been diagnosed with Kawasaki disease a few days ago. I'm really sorry to hear that. I'm here to clarify any doubts that you have regarding your daughter's diagnosis. Yeah, that's right, doctor. I actually have lots of questions to ask. Um, can you just like, briefly explain to me what Kawasaki disease is all about and why did it happen to my daughter? Okay, um, Kawasaki disease is a condition that mainly affects children normally under the age of five years old. It causes inflammation or swelling in the walls of blood vessel throughout the body and we also call them as mucocutaneous lymph node syndrome because we have this gland that well during infection which we call them as lymph node everybody has that and we have them throughout our body like neck region the armpit region inguinal region so what this disease does is they affect the lymph nodes and also sometimes the mucous membrane like inside the mouth the nose and the throat as well oh so what's the cause of it is it contagious doctor? Uh, the cause of Kawasaki disease isn't fully understood and it's not contagious, but a child may be more likely to develop this if they inherit certain genes from their parents. Um, by any chance, any of your family members been diagnosed with Kawasaki disease before? Actually, no, not that I know of. Um, doctor, Sarah yeah. actually have this pink rashes on the back, her belly and her tongue. And there were lots of red bumps with some whitish thing. Like you said, she had some swelling at the neck region as well. So all of these are the symptoms of Kawasaki disease, is it? And is there anything else that I need to know of? That's right. Those are those are the one of the symptoms of Kawasaki. Um, let me briefly tell you the features of uh, Kawasaki disease. Uh, the main one is the high grade fever. It can last for five days or even more. Plus, like you said, they will have these rashes all over their body. They will have swollen glands in the neck. Their lips might look dry and cracked. Eyes looking really reddish and the fingers and the toes, they look reddish as well. And um, the symptoms of Kawasaki actually they develop in a phases of six week period. So there are three phases. We have phase one that's around like week one to week two. That's when the child will have severe symptoms like high fever, rash, the skin on the fingers and the toes will swell. They look really red and painful also. And uh, the lips, the mouth, the throat, the tongue, they become, become really red swollen and covered with small lumps and which almost look like a strawberry so that's why we call it a strawberry tongue 
and then when you come to phase two that's around like week two to week four the symptoms will become less severe but even though the fever subside the child might still feel irritable and in pain a bit and then when you come to phase three that's around like week four to week six the symptoms will begin to improve all the features will eventually disappear but the child might be a little tired um is that clear mrs jenny that actually sounds like a really long time doctor so yes. um, another thing is uh, the doctor did some heart scan um, i'm not sure what exactly the name is and uh, well to sarah while she was in the ward how did kawasaki's disease affect her heart is it serious Okay, so heart complication occurs as a result of the inflammation also. And uh, without treatment, um, let's say around 25%, that's like one in four children who have Kawasaki disease, they can develop inflammation of the blood vessel, especially to the heart. Eventually, what happens is the inflamed um, blood vessel, or you can call it artery, they become really weak and get swollen and they develop like a bulge and what we call it as aneurysm. So over the time, it often goes away, but what we worry the most is the complications. Sometimes they can have a clot and they might develop in the aneurysm itself and cause heart attacks in children. In rare cases, the aneurysm might even rupture and cause severe internal bleeding. And that is why Sarah will need to have regular follow-up appointments with a heart specialist. It sounds really serious and really scary. Um, I will make sure to bring Sarah for the appointments. Um, another thing is, uh, what is aspirin? I know that this drug is given to the adult who has heart problems. Um, is it safe for Sarah? Um, so aspirin, they are used to treat Kawasaki disease um, because it can help with the pain, the fever and the discomfort as well. So normally there are doses based and if you are giving in high dose, the aspirin will uh, reduce the inflammation and if you give it in the low dose the aspirin will try to prevent blood clots forming in body in the body but for now they might prescribe at high dose to reduce the fever then low dose aspirin will be given up to probably six to eight weeks and um, like you said aspirin isn't usually given to children under the age of 18 because it can cause side effects like ray syndrome it is very rare but it can cause some serious liver and brain damage and it can be fatal if you don't treat it quickly but kawasaki disease is one of the few occasions where aspirin is recommended for child especially under the 16 years old and that's the reason we reduce the dose of aspirin once fever subsides so that we don't get uh, things like Ray syndrome. Uh, I see. And apart from this heart problem, can Sarah get any other problems in her body? Um, the swelling can basically occur in other arteries and in various parts of the body also, causing aneurysm elsewhere. But um, this is very rare, so we mainly focus on the heart for now. Uh, I see. Another thing is, um, I think Sarah was given another drug. I it's called IG or something. The doctor right. from the hospital explained to me about it, but I was really nervous that time. Can you please explain to me about what it is? Yeah, sure. So IVIG is intravenous immunoglobulin, and it's another treatment for Kawasaki disease as well. Um, immunoglobulin means it's a solution of antibodies taken from healthy uh, person. And intravenous means it's injected directly into your vein. So antibodies, they are protein the immune system produced to fight infection. So research has proven that using IVIG, they can reduce the fever and also the risk of heart problems as well. So normally after they give IVIG, the symptoms will start to improve within 36 hours. If not, then Sarah might be given a second dose of IVIG. Oh, I see. Now I understand. So, what should we do after we get discharged, doctor? Right. Um, do not worry, Mrs. Jenny. You will be given proper advice on how to take care of Sarah at home. Uh, the main things like make sure she's comfortable and drinking plenty of fluids and make sure she consumes the medication prescribed. And you will be given a follow-up appointment as well to monitor Sarah's heart. And once the scan confirms that Sarah doesn't have any heart abnormalities or problems, then they can usually stop taking aspirin also. Okay. That's really good to hear. So how long would it take for a full recovery? 
Um, it can take around six week time, but may take longer in some children. So you have to always look out if Sarah develop any further complication. Then she might need follow up treatment. Oh, okay. Um, another thing, the doctor told me to discuss Sarah's immunization with you because she received this drug IVIG. Um, okay. may I know the reason why? Okay. Um, so immunoglobulin and other blood products, they might interfere with the immune response to many live vaccine virus. And this is expected actually. And uh, let's say most people like us, we will have antibody to measles, varicella and other common virus. And this antibody, they prevent replication of the vaccine virus. So if protection is not required very soon, then that means live viral vaccine, they usually given at least three weeks before or three months after the injection of IVIG. Oh, I see. I, I totally understand right now. Uh, I'm much clearer now about everything. Okay, that's great. I know it's a lot to take in, Mrs. Jenny. Feel free to ask me further questions. We have lots of support group for you that can help you, um, such as the UK Foundation for Kawasaki Disease, the Kawasaki Support Group. And here are the leaflets for you to take a look at and understand more about the disease. I really hope Sarah will recover soon and we are always here to support you as well. Thank you so much for your time and for all the explanations, Dr. Priya. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Jenny, and have a good day. I hope the short consultation was helpful for you to understand about Kawasaki disease. Extra reading, the links will be down below in the description. Doing this communication skills video has been really helpful for my revision as well. If you have any ideas or any topic you want me to talk about, you can let me know down in the comments below. Please like and subscribe for more medicine-related content video. And till I see you in the next one, bye-bye.